back everyone and it's time to go BALLS D! Today there is a lot to discuss about Black Clover. Number 1, Lucifer's appearance and the final villain behind the Dark Triad. Oh, she's the one, Cole. Number 2, Yuno's new powers and how it's matching up to Asta. <laughs> and number 3, Xenon's backstory and death. Let's begin with chapter 310 as it helps me explain a spicy, a bit of masala, a bit of gutter masala in that. You know what I'm saying, my Indian fans? Shout out to you once again. I love my Indian bros from Bombay to Bangladesh. Filipinos, can't forget about you too. Shout out to all of you. I love you guys. Our community is amazing. And I have a spicy theory for our entire community regarding Lucifer's plan. So we first begin with Xenon and Yuno's magic clashing. Xenon's bones are are thrown across the entire arena. However, Yuno uses conjunction, which is an instantaneous movement between his stars. He blindsides Xenon and performs a spell called Quartai Flugelium Flagel. Why does he always make these mispronunciations? I hate ABD. Well, guys, try to pronounce this word yourself. Go on, give it a go. Give it a go, mate. <clears throat> Quartile Flagellum, which continues the theme of his star spells being named from Latin words as it means whip. Juno connects a beam through the star and slices Xenon in half like his Mortal Kombat fan. However, it can't destroy a devil's heart as Xenon keeps regenerating. We see Juno dual wield the whip and the spirit of Zephyr like. I'm, I look like I'm dripped out fam <laughs> With Yuno unleashing his ultimate drip, Xenon decides to match him by creating a bone sword combined with spatial magic coating called Dine Slife. Hey yo, Tabata, you're killing me. Hey, how, I, how do I pronounce this word? <laughs> <laughs> Xenon decides to match him by creating a bone sword combined with spatial magic coating called Dainslev. This sword can launch the spatial coating to create a spatial rupture that are impossible to defend against. Dainslev in Norse mythology is a mighty weapon named after a dwarf called Dain, whose name means dead in Old Norse. The name of the weapon can be translated into dead legacy, which uh, by the way, the Dark Tribe will be after Yuna's done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dainslef in mythology has a curse that states whenever the weapon is drawn from its sheath that it must always behead someone to quench the thirst of blood that the sword desires. Every time it is bared, someone must lose his life, which puts it into perspective that Xenon has unleashed his final trump card and has acknowledged Yuno in terms of power. He shoots spatial ruptures with the sword which destroy Yuno's stars. We then learn more about the fourth Zocratis sibling who is the real final villain. <laughs> The Dark Tribe's philosophy and ideological beliefs actually stem from the older brother and his brainwashing. When the siblings were younger, he states, The weak die easily. It's impossible to protect them all. So instead, let's destroy them all at once and then be reborn. This time in undying bodies. We who have obtained the devil's power with our magic, the four of us, the Zocratis siblings, can remake humankind. Let's create a spade kingdom that knows true peace with happy citizens no longer afraid of death. We saw glimpses of this ideological belief in every Zocratis sibling spread across many chapters in this arc, which makes it obvious how it leads to the fourth sibling and his ultimate plan since he's meant to represent sadism. I'm confused! I'm confused right now, G! Alright, alright, you're a little confused. Ballsy Prediction Magic is going at full power right now thanks to all of you, so let me break it down in simple terms. Dante stated, evil is the nature of humankind. As Dante represents the subconscious idea of humankind and embracing evil as it would allow you to truly become human and that follows in line with what the fourth sibling said that they can remake humankind. Varnica said that they want to destroy the weak as she wants to live in a world of strong people allowing just the most blessed to live in a devil riddled world a world that is also aligned with the fourth Socrates sibling. Lastly Zenon said emotions are meaningless in front of power and how he wants to create a peaceful nation for the citizens and the fourth Socrates sibling mentions that they can create true peace
peace where the citizens of the Spade Kingdom don't need to be protected. Now, a big theory I'm going to present to our community regarding the fourth Socrates is that he is manipulating all his siblings for his own selfish desire. We can clearly deduce the older sibling manipulating Zenon's heartstrings and desire for good for his own very purpose, as he uses nice words like true peace and happy citizens to entice Zenon into following his plan, thus making him believe he is actually doing something good for the Spade Kingdom. When his best friend Alan died, Zenon came back to his brother traumatized from the battle in the dungeon against the devil, which we can assume was planted by the fourth sibling just so that Zenon would be in the palm of his hands. Referring back to the very introduction of Dante stating these very words before the war started in chapter 231. Every dark triad was bullied for their magic. We saw in Zenon's past that his bone magic was frowned upon and was beaten up for it. Dante and Veronica think he's pathetic because of this, but shortly after, his older brother encourages him, saying he's more like him, having more talent for devil possession than his other siblings, enticing him on the idea of his power having more meaning. Dante and Varnica must have also been mistreated by society, since Varnica's blood magic would be seen as disgusting, which would have led to her loneliness and psychopathic view on friendship, since lacking friends from a young age, gaining this insecurity and his mental health issues, it would have led to an infatuation of making some friends with Noelle and the Heart Queen. This theme is then continued with Dante, as he stated himself that he hates his own body magic and thinks it's ugly. If he was bullied for it just like the others, it would lead to his narcissistic traits to make up for his confidence. The oldest sibling in the wheelchair would have observed all of these insecurities within the others and brainwashed them with a worldview that would give them the purpose they lacked due to their mistreatment. The eldest brother completes the tetrad of the dark personality traits the characters are based on. Sadism is the addition to the dark triad which has narcissism, Machiavellianism and psychopathy. This means a person that is sadistic possesses the characteristics of all these personality traits. Sadism is a person who takes pleasure in inflicting pain, punishment or humiliation on others. And as you can figure out, because you're in our community, you have that notification bell on. I have broken down how each dark tribe member represents a piece of the puzzle in terms of philosophy and traits, which ultimately leads to the man in the wheelchair. Whoa! The fact that there are four siblings explains why the Time Devil, who is one of the three kings of hell, is still nowhere to be seen. And that's because at least one of the kings of hell must be for himself. We all saw the sheer versatility Julius had with time magic, as just with a magic tool and his own magic, Julius managed to cheat death itself. Seeing as the fourth sibling was in a wheelchair, but claims that his potential of devil possession is the the most powerful out of all the siblings, it just proves that he can be taken over by a devil at 100% power, since Zenon already completed this feat with Beelzebub, who is one of the kings mentioned in chapter 286. When we saw Nacht trying to make a deal with Lucifuge, a high ranked devil that serves the three kings, his body and magic couldn't handle the sheer amount of power, which caused the ritual to fail and his brother dying. This proves to me that something is stopping the fourth sibling from 100% completing his contract with his devil to his absolute desire. His face is yet to be revealed, but it would definitely have a tattoo that represents the contract just like the other characters. One of the kings of hell obviously requires a strong body to be able to make the contract and begin the assimilation between vessel and host. The fourth sibling could be manipulating his entire family to create a perfect body for himself to achieve achieve this and then attain their goal of world domination. He probably lost his legs whilst being in contract with one of the devils or he gave them away as part of a contract, just like Asta did with his arm and Zenon did with his soul. The fact that he mentions undying bodies in chapter 310 is extremely interesting because it shows that there is a plan in mind to regenerate. If we look at the chapter called Undying Bodies, which is chapter 278, it actually 
featured a color page with the triad laying down in a pool of blood forming a triangle as if it's a ritual and they're part of a sacrifice. This image could be inspired from the river Styx which in Greek mythology is a river in the underworld and this river expresses a loathing of death and if you bathe in the river Styx successfully you would gain physical invulnerability. This is more likely what this color page represents and explains the plan that the fourth sibling has since he is feeble and weak and in a wheelchair. He wants to gain not only immortality but also invincibility. Xenon has bone magic, Veronica has blood magic, Dante has body magic which means the fourth sibling would combine these magic types with his own to fix himself in his prime. Maybe he will sacrifice his own siblings, maybe he will work with them, maybe he's not that heartless. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. We have seen Morris already experiment with Dante's body magic to enhance it even further. So that just proves that he may be in contact with the eldest sibling to make sure their ultimate plan comes into fruition. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is Balls Deep Prediction Magic. Now I also want to shout out a couple of you that have been sharing your mana, supporting our channel and making it possible for me to cover multiple different series on the channel and on a regular basis. Shout out to Mark Dash, Niflheim, Pixel Gaming YouTube 123, Edorito, Phantom Reaper, Mika Sage Bolden, Anime Piano Covers 2020, Kadeem, Brafa, what the hell? Teku Senju, Black Trunks, The Boondocks Fan, and many, 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 many more of you. Your donations and using the thanks feature for our comment section, which by the way, I will shout out all of you that donate. You will be featured on a video if you donate to the channel and in the future we are going to fix our memberships where there will be a private discord for those that support us i just wanted to give these people what they deserve thank you for sticking with our community smash that like button but let's get back to the video Moving back to the chapter, we see the sheer insanity of this fight as the entire building starts crumbling down. Yuno teleports with the spirit of Boreas in hand, ready to strike down Xenon. However, he reacts by casting a spatial rupture destroying the weapon. With that, Yuno's stars have broken and he has no way to defend or dodge. But here comes the fatal mistake that Xenon makes. He says, this time it really is over and we know this is a shown in me. When the villains say it's over, it means it's over for their stupid ass. This is when we get the explanation for how a spirit user can achieve saint stage. Saint stage is when the resonance between the user and spirit is close to 100% and throughout this fight Yuna has become more true to himself. As in the last chapter, the wind spirit said that she finally felt like she met the real Yuno, meaning the synchronization is now better than it was before. The dryad in the previous chapters stated to Noel that Saint Stage is a power that destroys evil and is also capable of killing a devil's heart, therefore making it arcane and allowing Yuno to kill Xenon. Behind Yuno are a multitude of portals, all with bones coming out of them. They stab Yuno in several places at once, making him stuck and as Xenon goes in for the final blow, he teleports and then he sees the spell in his grimoire being used. It's conjunction. Xenon mentions that in the face of overwhelming strength, everything is meaningless and claims his victory. But oh, boy oh boy, you're wrong son, you're wrong. Oopsie daisy, oops. You forgot he was the protagonist again, didn't you? <laughs> He realizes that it's the opposite, where his own strength became the catalyst for Yuno's growth. It's a funny irony because Xenon has lost in the face of Yuno's overwhelming power. The stronger the mage, the more stars are born, which gives him the victory. Yuno snaps back at Xenon saying, you mean we win? <laughs> we then head back into Black Clover chapter 311. Yuno slices Xenon clean in half and it's at this moment that Xenon vents and he thinks to himself, hmm, we're both very similar. So Yox, Yuno, where, where do we differ? And Yuno literally says, 
I don't know. It's pretty sad that Zenon didn't realize he didn't act like a protagonist and that's why he lost. Yuno may not have a definitive answer, but he brings up Asta regarding the vow they made, their rivalry, and how he's still in the middle of the story, he's still reading the manga fam. The manga's still ongoing, this shit gonna be going on for another 400 chapters. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> he's like shit i'm still part of this story bitch so whilst he's thinking of asta at the same time xenon thinks back to his vow to alan realizing where he had gone wrong suddenly the place begins to collapse but knocked with his heaven shadow second sight sees what yuno has accomplished of course the goat asta is super impressed since his rival has matched his power but now we know the whole triad has been defeated shouldn't they be able to save yami and and win him now? No. no. Oh my god! Noct comments that all three Zakratis siblings are defeated, yet the advent hasn't ended. The manga then switches to the spirit guardians, who are struggling against a horde of devils. They keep coming out, more and more keep coming, and it's not stopping at all, like yeah. these devils are out to kill them. The manga then decides it's about time to give Julius some relevance again. One of my favorite characters is back on screen, almost about to faint. I'm tired of suffering. Julius has an overwhelming feeling that something is odd. He is concerned about what is happening and believes something terrible is about to occur. I personally think the reason Julius is having this feeling is because the time devil who is one of the kings of hell is playing a role with the acceleration of the gates of cliff off and must be involved in Lucifer's or the fourth Socrates siblings plan. Julius being a time wizard and involved in space time per se, I would like to believe he is being affected because he is able to perceive the flow of time and how things in reality are drastically changing via time magic which explains why his predictions always come true according to Yami. When we go back to Morris in chapter 311 we can see this may be true. Morris was fighting Dorothy and has defeated her. Dorothy told us that she wanted to be able to trap a devil in a dream magic and was training for that goal but you know here she is she's been off screen and um she kind of failed. Mission failed. We'll go next time. Lie, lies, and more lies. Oh my god! We then see Bald's deep prediction magic coming true. Lotus betrayed Morris and he was a spy. But just like Dorothy, he ain't no match for a dude that powerful. I mean, look, this dude's missing a literal arm for crying out loud. We're reminded that Lotus has a family to go back to. And that's why he does what he does. When suddenly, Morris confirms to us that the Dark Tried aren't needed anymore. Shut the fuck up. Morris sees himself as a prophet and believes his impairment led him to be chosen by the devil. Remember that. Lucifero can now talk through Morris and mocks Dante, implying that he's stupid, stupid. and confirming that he was nothing but a Lucifer mentions that he knew all along what Medjugula was doing by manifesting earlier than intended through her ritual and that he was observing her as an experiment. First off, let's give some claps. Claps guys, let's give some claps to Tabata. He maintained the integrity of Lucifer and did good writing by having his true host be Morris and disassociating himself with Dante, making him not seem as a stu stupid. stupid king. You know what I'm saying? We were all wondering, why is Lucifer not interfering with the world if he can see that Dante's Crash. trash, he has the omniscient power, what is he doing, mate? Now we can see that he had puppets and layers of safety for his meticulous planning for the cliff off to succeed. Lucifer's goal is just like Medjugula, to manifest earlier than intended, meaning the second gate would not be another cliff off devil, but Lucifer himself. We are in the end game. He now sees that it's possible thanks to both Medjugula and Morris's reconstruction magic. Morris states that he remade the tree of cliff off with his magic. The only people that are required now are Yami and William. He creates a new monstrous demon to destroy all of them and Lotus is about to die. But that's when Mike Ting, my guy, my girl, we get the whole gang joining the party now. Vanessa, Ghost, Golden, Great, and Henry show up. They pull up. Okay, I pull up. 
with the Black Bull base form fam, they're ready to kick some devil ass. But again, they only mentioned Yami. No one cares about William. Who? Bruh, this joke doesn't die. They literally don't mention him. No one cares. Who? Anyway, guys, that's my analysis for the week. I could have gone into more in depth, but of course, I will save that for next week. Make sure that you have the notification bell on for the channel. Make sure to smash the like button. Follow us on Twitter or Instagram or donate if you want a shout out. And we'll see you guys next time.